These movies were supposed to be epic, but they were cinematic disasters instead. What can we do about this? Welcome to WatchMojo.com. Today, we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 worst disaster movies. May the record reflect that he was nearly one hour late. Yeah, sorry about that. I literally had to fly in from outer space. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're focusing on the most dreadful disaster movies, dating all the way back to the 70s. Jones. Number 10, San Andreas. I'm gonna have to auto rotate down. The auto what? I'm gonna crash. Right. Okay. Even though this film literally rocked it at the box office, that doesn't make it a top notch disaster flick. There's plenty of entertainment value in San Andreas, yet it's the lack of heart that makes it eh. Ready? Twist down, ready? Yep. The visual effects do pop, and The Rock, Carla Gugino, and Alexandra Daddario provide star power. Unfortunately, that's simply not enough to salvage the saggy plot. The film's big-time $110 million budget was clearly aimed to produce basic popcorn fun rather than a script with some emotional heft. Number 9. The Day After Tomorrow It's been raining like this for three days now. If this is indeed the highest grossing Hollywood film made in Canada, eh, then Canada needs to do better. Directed by Roland Emmerich, the man behind Independence Day and Universal Soldier, The Day After Tomorrow is thrilling, but very preachy. And that preachiness isn't even that useful. It's a movie that provokes more than it educates, as evidenced by criticism from actual scientists. It's steeped in post-9-11 fright and just doesn't hold up alongside other disaster movies that give the audience much more bang for their buck. Number 8, 2012. Five years after The Day After Tomorrow, Roland Emmerich gave it another go with a new disaster movie, this time with no shame whatsoever. Hey, it's not an entirely unappealing epic, what with its apocalyptic Mayan overtones and an appropriate atmosphere of cataclysmic doom. The movie did capitalize on a lot of anxiety about the then upcoming supposedly cursed year 2012. And to be fair, the film was a worldwide hit. But John Cusack in the lead role just doesn't quite cut it, and its lack of true star power is painfully clear. Then there's the 158 minute running time that, well, let's be frank, is itself kind of a disaster of time management. That is not good. Number 7, Left Behind. I want to see this captain! As both an adaptation of a polarizing novel and a reboot of the original Kirk Cameron franchise, this production seems like it was doomed from the start. After all, mainstream disaster flicks typically need a budget higher than a paltry $16 million. Plus, Nicolas Cage's acting, though always possessing a certain je ne sais quoi, isn't strong enough to carry the film. Some critics feel this even marks the unofficial end of his wide box office appeal. Irene knew this was coming. Overall, everyone tries hard in the apocalyptic left behind, only they try way too hard to make it a fundamental Christian polemic rather than a movie that won't make viewers cringe. Where are my kids? I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them, but right now, I have to do my job so that we're all safe. Safe? Safe from what? Sit down. Number six, Volcano. Lava. Lava? Uh, here in LA. Released just after Dante's Peak, which is a much better volcano eruption film, this Mick Jackson flick suffers from Hollywooditis. Volcano is based in Los Angeles and holds a lot of potential with its La Brea tar pit setting, but the lack of character depth sinks it. The main baddie, of course, is actual lava, which doesn't have the same zingy shock appeal as more visually innovative disaster films. Okay, okay, now you can see it coming right at us. Just a relentless tide of lava melting the street itself. On paper, Volcano seems like a winner, but it's a bore from beginning to end, a classic example of Hollywood producers placing more value on contrived drama rather than visceral thrills. You don't like my plan? That's good. Give me another plan, but don't tell me we're backing out. Is everybody clear on this? Yeah. All right, let's go. Go to war. Number five, The Core. 
With its $85 million budget, this movie had enough financial flexibility to produce something special. Unfortunately, the derivative molten core journey to the center of the Earth premise was overly convoluted and poo-pooed by actual scientists. The faulty script is just too big a hurdle to overcome. This plan is decaying faster than I thought. It's a disaster flick that teases viewers with Hollywood appeal, but there's just not a lot going on deep inside. The cast, including names like Aaron Eckhart, Stanley Tucci, and Hilary Swank, also feels empty when they really should have been the core. Bear with me, not exactly nimble here. Number four, The Happening. Are you joking? By 2008, director M. Night Shyamalan was at the cinematic crossroads and he badly needed a mainstream hit to jumpstart his moribund career. But The Happening is not your typical mainstream disaster flick. It doesn't possess the bold and shocking allure of previous Shyamalan movies, nor is it even that scary, unfortunately. It's just reflective of a struggling director trying something different, even more different than usual, and with boring results. Even star Mark Wahlberg admitted that it was a pretty bad movie. You lied to me? Number three, Pompeii. Perhaps the gods spared me for a reason. Directed by Event Horizon filmmaker Paul W.S. Anderson, this Neapolitan disaster movie is ambitious. But where Pompeii does succeed with its technical accuracy, it fails with its weak central love story, or is that lava story, and supporting characters. Based on the famous Mount Vesuvius eruption, there's plenty of terror and wreckage, and that's good. But the lack of character nuance waters down the drama, and there's just too much going on plot-wise, and not enough focus on developing interesting emotional connections. The real Pompeii event was most memorable, but this movie is eminently forgettable. Nothing but lies. Number two, Meteor. That meteor is five miles wide and it's definitely gonna hit us. Given the names attached to this Hong Kong American sci-fi production, including Sean Connery, Carl Malden, and the late Natalie Wood, it seemed to have star power, pun intended. But the cast of Meteor was past its collective prime and the political Cold War themes just haven't aged well. Of course, the special effects haven't either, which is an equally major problem. As a whole, Meteor fails with cluttered narrative, poor acting, and even worse direction. It's a mashup of science fiction tropes, a victim of its era, and an example of what not to do when producing a disaster film. It's coming apart in a million pieces! Number one, Poseidon. To be fair, this loose remake of the 1972 original features amazing visual effects, but this otherwise laudable emphasis on technology actually makes Poseidon a hollow film. Director Wolfgang Peterson understands the appeal of an ocean-based disaster flick. Titanic, anyone? Yet his characters, you know, actual human beings, are merely supporting players here for the underwater carnage. For some viewers, that works, but the complete lack of heart is painfully obvious proving that a production team with big concepts can easily sabotage a big budget. Ironically, this movie just doesn't hold water. What the hell did you go and do to all these people? Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.